while we're on the topic of uh, restrictions, let's do a couple of more harder problems so you guys get a pretty good idea of where this goes, which is basically our restriction is you can't divide by zero. So whatever is in the bottom of a fraction, you take that and set it equal to zero or not equal to zero, and that's going to be your restriction, right? So all you do if they ask you what the restrictions are for this problem, or even if they ask you to solve this problem, what you should do is, initially, the first step you should do is find your restrictions and make a little note of it on the side, side of the paper so you know what your restrictions are. So after you solve this uh, equation, when you get to the bottom, you can cross-reference your restrictions with your solutions. That way, if any of the restrictions appear in your solutions, you can knock them off, right? So right now, let's just assume they ask you, you know, what would the restrictions for this uh, equation be? Okay. So let's find the restrictions. All you do is take the denominator and say that can't equal zero. So all you do, you go x plus two can't equal zero. Square root of x minus one can't equal zero. 2x squared plus 1 can't equal 0. Okay. Those are your restrictions, but obviously you're going to have to solve these, you know, not equations, but not equal to uh, equations, I guess. Uh, so all you do for this one is just grab this. x cannot equal negative 2. That, oops, that is a restriction, right? Over here, you grab the 1 over, so you get square root of x is equal to 1. And the way you get x by itself here, this is square root, you do the opposite, which is square, right? So you square both sides. So x is equal to 1 squared is just 1, right? Over here, so you got your restriction is going to be, oops, this should be a not equal to, by the way. So this is x can't equal 2, negative 2. x can't equal 1. And over here, we're going to do the same thing. Move the 1 over and solve for the x, right? So you got 2x squared can't equal, bring the 1 over, it's negative 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2, you got x squared can't equal negative square root of negative 1 over 2, okay? And over here, what you do is you square root both sides, right? Now, on this side, you're going to get square root of x squared, x can't equal square root of negative 1 over 2. Is that still in the word? That's still in the word. Square root of negative 1 over 2, but again, that is another restriction that we have, which with the real number set anyway, we there is a way to work, uh, work ourselves around this, and we will get into that later on in, in series that are going to come up, right? These are called, called complex number or imaginary numbers, and that's the square root of a negative number. So for us, what that means is there are no restrictions we can't, we can't, because we can't take the square root of a negative number. So for this, there's nothing we could put in here to make this denominator equal to zero. And that should be, after you look at this, and sort of um, consider what's being done here. This is two times x squared plus one, right? The only way we could get the denominator to equal zero if this part of it was equal to negative one, right? Because it would be negative one plus one, that's equal to zero. Now what's happening here, this is x squared. We can't, if you put a negative number here, because the only way you can turn this negative if you have a negative number here, right? because that's positive, two is positive. If you put a negative number here, negative number squared is always gonna be positive. So there is no way for us to make this term negative. That means there is no way for us to make this, this denominator equal to zero. So this fraction doesn't have any restrictions, okay? So as far as restrictions goes here, there are no restrictions here. If you were dealing, if you were in higher level mathematics, uh, when you're going, uh, beyond, outside of the real number set, when you go into the imaginary number set, there would be a solution to this. And the solution to this would be x is equal to, or can I write this? That's right here. This would be x is equal, cannot equal uh, 1 over 2 i. Okay. So for anyone, uh, anyone that's done imaginary numbers, i represents the square root of negative 1. And, uh, oops, sorry. Let's put a square root here. So it would be 1 over square root of 2i because, yeah, you still have to take the square root of a half to bring it out, right? So this would be basically i on top of
i over square root 2, and that would be our restriction for this, uh, for this equation, for that fraction, that side of the equation. I just uh, left the text with you. Oh, okay, yeah, for sure. Is that the textbook right there on the? Oh yeah, no, no. That's it. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. I was like freaking out. Like, <laughs> They're expensive. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, too much, too much. Yeah, well, thanks for helping me find it, man. Oh yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, later. Later. I guess he thought I was a teacher or something, or a TA. Good, 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 good. I think the beard helps. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is a harder problem right now, right? So we got uh, 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to x minus 2, x squared minus 5x plus 6, right? Uh, let's, let's take a look at this. Even if you get something like this more complicated, again, one more level. It's not really an order of magnitude. It's one more level more complicated. We've gone into quadratic equations now. Now, the way you solve for this, you find the restrictions. Again, all you do, you take the denominator and say this can't equal zero. You take this denominator and say this can't equal zero. Now, these two might look similar, but there's a difference, difference here. That's a negative number and that's a positive number. And there's, the solutions to this are going to be different. So this is x squared plus 5x plus 6 can't equal zero. And the way you solve for this is you have to factor this. This is a simple trinomial. For anyone that's done this, um, you know, you should know the answer to this. What you're looking for is two numbers to multiply to give you six, two, and those same two numbers have to add up to give you positive five. And the way you do this is you want to break this down into two things multiplied together. So all this is going to be is going to be x, x, plus two, plus three. And that's this quadratic equation factor, and what you do, you take each one of these not equal to zero, right? So all you do, x plus two can't equal zero, and x plus three equal negative two, and equal negative three. And those two are going to be our restrictions for this side of this equation, and for the other side, you're going to do the same thing. Your answers are just going to be different, okay? Over here, you're going to take this same thing again and say, this cannot equal zero, and the way you solve for this is, you factor it exactly the way you did here, but this time, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you positive 6. Remember the sign in front of the number goes with the number? So you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you positive 6 and have to give you negative 5. Over here, we're positive 5. Well, it's the same two numbers, it's just their signs are different, right? So it's going to be can't equal. So it's going to be x times x minus 2 minus 3. Okay, over here, we're plus 2 plus 3. If you go negative 2 times negative 3, you're going to get positive 6. Negative 2, negative 2 plus negative 3, you're going to get negative 5. Right? Each one of these, not equal to 0. And it's moving. X can't equal. So this equation has four restrictions. Simple as this. And, um, you know, it you know, grows from there. You can throw anything in the bottom and you're always going to have to do some kind of analysis on this and find out what your equation can't be solved for. And when you graph these things, um, you know, they're going to end up uh, later on when we get into functions. These are basically one function equals another function. That's what we have here right now, this equation really. Uh, so one model equals another, another model, and you're comparing them, and you know you can overlay them and change the models. Basically, that's what you're doing when, with with mathematics. The power of it is you take one model and another model, and you can incorporate them together and see how those models would work together. Right. So with restrictions, the way it works is you end up either getting asymptotes or you get holes, uh, you know, a certain place that an x can't be and you don't have a, well, and you can get an x, but there is no associated y with it, so the function collapses. And these are what our restrictions do, is if this side of the equation is a function, if that side of the equation is a function, is a model, if we're modeling something in the word, real world, or if mo we're modeling something financial, right, we're comparing two different models. So what happens is when we do this kind of analysis or we you know, solve these kinds of equations, we find out what our models cannot be, what, what they don't have a solution for. You know, we can have an x value, and, but the y value associated with this x, there is none. Our models basically collapse um, when when we approach these restrictions, and these restrictions are either going to be asymptotes or they're going to be holes, which is basically an unknown. So an asymptote basically means you can't cross it. You can't 
you know, there's no direct link from one side to the other, and a whole means nothing exists associated with certain x value. And that's why our restrictions are super important, because it gives us our limitations of what we could do with the language of mathematics. And using that language, you know, what our restrictions will be uh, for a specific type of model, for a specific type of function. Okay. Super important stuff. And the higher level mathematics you go is uh, the more you start looking at your restrictions and what your limitations are in the language of math and you know you get into more proofs and trying to expand our vocabulary to incorporate some of the unknowns right now that we have.